Hello, everyone. Welcome again to the Thought TV Show. Here we share our thoughts and discuss critical issues as they are. And if you are joining us for the first time, if you are watching us anywhere from the first time, please subscribe to this channel for great content. Uh, today we'll be discussing the impact of Montessori and AI, and that is artificial intelligence in the 21st century education. And I'm not here alone. I have here with me a renowned educator in the studio. He's a literary of the T Journey Teachers Academy. Uh, he's a certified and trained teacher. He will be doing justice to today's topic. There's no other person than Mr. Tayo Mustafa. He's popular, popularly known as Coach T. Coach T, you are welcome to the show this morning. Thank you, Kennedy. Thanks for having me around. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome again. Um, yeah, I want us to first and foremost uh, discuss, um, uh, share a little bit light on the subject matter, which is um, Montessori. So what is actually Montessori? What is Montessori education and what is it all about? Mm, wow. The word uh, Montessori. This word Montessori was originated by a woman. She was a medical doctor, actually. Now, the first female doctor in Italy was Maria Montessori. Oh, you, 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 sorry, you mean, you mean the name is, the, the name Montessori is coined out from a woman's name? Yes. Wow, so some of those of, so some of the women being book up now, their name cannot be coming out, I mean, to something great. Now, it, it is a lesson, it is a, it is a lesson. Actually, you said she's a medical doctor. Yes. So, I, I imagine a medical doctor being in line, I mean, in an educational line. And not only that, she, 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 she has a kind of legacy that, a lot of people are craving after today. All right. So, so now, how, how, what's, what are the impacts? I mean, how the she comes about the Montessori method of education and stores like that? You were saying something. Okay. Well, like I said, she was a medical doctor, actually. All right. She, she was posted to, you know, as a medical doctor, you need to undergo what we call an induction. Yeah. Yeah. So during our process of our induction, she, she had the privilege to walk along with um, disabled children, special needs children. Right. And as a result of that, Maria Montessori started um, making an observation, making a discovery about these children, how they can learn. And as a result... Disabled children. Yes. All right. So in this, actually, the Montessori method of teaching was, I I initially, she had the intention of introducing it to the special needs children. So that was how she started her work, making her findings and her discovery. That was how she arrived at this Montessori method of teaching approach that every school is now are making use of now. Yes, yes. Every school are running after the Montessori method of teaching now. So now we, we, we have discovered that the fact that it is originated from, I mean, it is originally started by a medical doctor. Uh, oh, what do you call her name? What do you call her name? Maria Montessori. Oh, Montessori. Wow, that is it. That is a good one. That is, I mean, shedding light on on that. So it is not just a coined up name from Son Bier. No. So it is part of a name. Yes. So I think that is for a particular legacy. That is interesting to know. Now, why should all schools adopt this Montessori method of education? Why? Hmm. Well, this has been a very good question that we need to keep um, making this history, we need to keep preaching this to all schools that uh, the best method so far that we can use for children from age zero to ten is adopting Maria Montessori method of teaching because one, it ends the children in their total way of life. So children are not only learning numeracy and literacy, but they are building to a child. So you mean, well, I, I'm sorry. So you see, this is your numeracy and literacy. It is, it is not everybody. And every one of us are not as learned as you. So you mean uh, learning A, B, C, and um, one, two, three. Oh, oh, that is what you meant. You meant yes, there, right? the one we right. call the uh, mathematics uh, and uh, English uh, during our time. Uh, so uh, not to some method of teaching is not only about learning mathematics and uh, English, uh, but it builds the children total way of life. They are working with everything about their life. They are also building skills from their world, early childhood. Mm. And they also learn about everything about the world. So I'm not talking about Montessori method of teaching approach. It's something that we, we can't overlook in the world, in the educational sector now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 
So now it, it is it is it is well known now that uh, Montessori education is very important. Yes. So we should now you are advising schools or now you are advising educators. You are advising. I mean, advising uh, people in the education sphere to imbibe. I mean, to just chip in the edu- I mean Montessori method of education rights. Yes. So what what are the what are the impacts? What are the I mean side attraction mm. that Montessori has that others do not have? Okay. Now when we look at the side attraction of Montessori with the traditional method, because yeah. I can remember being our own days in primary school then we were taught with the traditional method of teaching whereby some of us we we are not always happy when we to school because we will not be happy. I remember my math teacher that I will not be happy because when you come to the class, they will give you they will give you a kind of um, uh, example, and when it is time to give you a class, or that giving you something entirely, so you will be there racking your brain, and you know at the end of everything you are going to be beaten, even if you try. It's just a few one of them. So, so I can I can understand I can understand what you are trying. So to say. the Montessori method of teaching approach, like I said, it it far different from the traditional method of teaching. Okay. Because, well, like I said, during our time, we are not privileged to work with concrete materials. Mm-hmm. We, and that's why, you see, some of us, there, we don't like mathematics. Exactly. We find mathematics as one of the most difficult subjects yes, because the learning is taking place only on the board. Mm-hmm. We're not privileged to see, to feel, and it makes learning to be boring and dead. So, and that's why most of us find school. Certain difficult to go to mean it's it's so, so now you yeah, yeah, you mean on uh, uh, the Montessori uh, teaching method is um let's say something like play away method an interactive section right is that what you are trying to yes do? Montessori is a play away method whereby the children are the one doing the work okay and like I do tell educators what the children use the ends to do they don't forget easily wow. so when you use your ends to count. You use your hands to do simple addition, it sticks to your brain. Exactly. And that's one of the ways where Maria Montessori exactly. has went, introduced education in this 21st century. Okay. That learning has to take place through what we call concrete objects. All right, all right. So now we, we, we make use of objects to teach, to learn. Um, in the, I mean, I mean, in the play way method. Play way method. Yeah. But well, that's interesting. Now there is this other questions I would like to ask, and it is um the the British um curriculum. Yeah, is it the same thing as a Montessori curriculum? Because most times, well, most times when a lot of people hear Montessori system of education, I mean, we, we believe it is from the British. So, is there any correlation bef- between the both of them? Is it the same thing? Okay. Well, the British curriculum and Montessori. They are not the same, but they are interconnected. Okay, in what way? Okay. Now, in Montessori, we have five areas of learning that children will be learning. All right. The same thing with the British curriculum. We have seven areas of learning that children will be also be worth learning. But both the British and the Montessori, the five areas and the seven areas, they are interconnected. So, whether you are a school running a British curriculum, how you are a school running a Montessori method of teaching, you are still going to arrive at the same objective because the British curriculum and the Montessori curriculum are what? We are deriving at the same objectives to enhance the 21st century children that we have today. All right. So it, it means that we can we can substitute one for the other. Yes. So if we are not um, liable to guess the Montessori, we can go for the British well, which one, which one, which one would you prefer? Which one would you like advise people to go for? Like, okay, to you, which one do you, would you just like, okay, I prefer this, I prefer that? Okay. You know, one thing about the Montessori is that it is not every school that can run this Montessori. Right. Because the word Montessori is very huge mm. and it's very broad. When we said huge, we're talking about the apparatus aspect now, which it requires a millions of money. To establish a Montessori setting in a school. Exactly. Yes, but, I've, been, I've, been, I've been to a school and uh, been to a school some times ago and I saw a lot of objects in the class. I was like, in our days, if we get this kind of thing, we're not going to do anything, we'll just be playing. Because I saw a lot of, you see, you see, you see kids like uh, two years, three years play with a lot of, I was even taking their own break. 
So it was one of the teachers telling me that no, they're actually not on break. They, are, they were in a class. So now, like what you said now, so you, you need a lot of fund to execute the Montessori system of education. Yeah. Or is it worth it? Oh, yes. Yes. All right. So we've, we've established the fact that our Montessori system of education is very, very important. It's very, very important. The same thing with the British curriculum. But, you know, one thing about the British curriculum is that all schools can adapt the British curriculum because it doesn't require huge amount of money to establish. So it is a, it is a, it is a curriculum that every school can make use of. Whether you are in local schools or you are up to the standard. So that's one thing about the British curriculum. Every school can operate the British curriculum. But the Montessori, if you are not well equipped, mm -hmm. you can't operate Montessori setting. So, the only thing we can do is that you can just, you can be trying. Trying to do it with all. Yes, but we cannot really be granted with what Montessori method of teaching like, applies. Like, like our adage, you see, better, mo better soup. Namoni Kiram. So, so it means our school owners, uh, this is an advice for school owners watching this. So if you are going for the Montessori system of education, you need to be equipped. It is very important, like the coach said. It is very germane, but you need to know what you are doing. You need All right, our coach, speaking about artificial intelligence, AI. Now, uh, what are the most promising innovations in education, technology, and how are they transforming learning? Hmm. How exactly? Well, this AI everything, I want to encourage all school owners practitioners in the house watching this video to adapt to the the new trends that is going on now. So it is a trend now. Yes. Good. AI is a new trend now because one thing I love about this AI everything is what we as the teachers, we as an educators, it's relieving us in some aspects of our work. Now, if you are still a teacher that you are still struggling to write lesson notes, you need to adapt to this AI of a thing. So, so coach, they're telling me now that, oh, so you can write a lesson note with AI now. Yes. As you're watching this, it is a good innovation. So now there's no stress writing notes, sitting down for hours to write a lesson note. Yes. All right. All right. Yes. With the help of AI. Okay. In fact, even with the help of AI of the thing, we can uh, make our learnings to be fun in the classroom. All right. We can make our learning to be virtual with the help of AI. Now, as we're approaching this summer of the now, we have some schools that they might decide to hold their summer school to be on work, on virtual, purely on AI. Mm -hmm. When you look at when they have the lockdown of the you see that not schools that have been running technologies, they didn't find it difficult when the federal government asked us to go online. They didn't find it difficult. Mm, Even some exactly, schools, exactly. they were charging the, the, the normal fees See. that they were collecting even when they were having their own site. Interesting. But when you see schools that they, they, they are not ready to adapt to technology, they find it difficult to even gather their parents, their learners, to work with online classes. So now we should do it. We, now what you're telling us, now, we should do it with, um, we should do it with um, um, uh, the traditional... Um, method of um teaching and stuff like that yes all right so now would would, would would those i mean would the ai the the advent of i mean ai not have um uh i mean a backlash because i like you said now you use ai to mark register you use ai to write lesson notes is it not going to make the teachers lazy mm, well uh, I mean, I, I, yes i have to throw it to you mm. because a lot of teachers are lazy before now introducing technology, yes, as this today teaching activities, yes, will it make them improve? How is it? How is it going to make them improve? Okay, making use of the AI in what assessing children, upgrading their results online, and so on and so forth. Right. The AI of the thing. When we're talking about AI, it is only for those that are well, they are learned. Those that have these skills of technology that can work with AI. So AI is not for the lazy type mm. because you need to sit down. There are some things that you need to do before you can arrive 
at it on what your results so like courses there are courses you need to take to learn how to use the yes. ai all right so it is not something that you can just go online mm-hmm. and what you, you will start typing for your meal there are some courses there are some procedure mm-hmm. there are some what there are some apps that you need to know how to use before implementing AI in your school. Even the AI has a technical know-how. It, it, yes. just, it can't just go into it. You need to know how to make use of that. Exactly. Now, at the Tea Jolly Education um, Consult, do you do we teach people on how to make use of the AI and are there special programs? Okay. Uh, what happened is that uh, I need to tell all practitioners, all school leaders, we need to keep following the new trends that is happening in these educational sectors. Exactly. Because if you did not follow the trends, one day you will be updated. Mm-hmm. And if you want to be updated, you keep learning. So, so in our academy, we don't only train teachers on the skills needed, mm-hmm. but we also train them on what it is important about what technology is talking about now. Mm-hmm. Because with technology, you can write your lesson notes, you can prepare your diary and a lot more. Things like that, yeah. So, AI means really making the education sectors not easier for teachers. My, my, my concern now, Koshti, is, is, is that uh, AI should not take the position of teachers now. Yes. Because I, I was discussing with somebody yesterday concerning this same topic. Now, I, I was saying that in those days, we are always afraid of our mass teacher. Yes. Because now, uh, I believe AI will not be able to do some things. Yeah. AI is not going to implement fear inside a child. Yes. You understand? Yes. Now, so now my own fear now this days is that because the trend of things, I mean, the trend outside that now is that you say everybody wants to do what is in vogue, what is going on. So, you know, using AI and stuff like that, when you go to all these um big countries, you see them even using drones for medical examination and stuff like that. So a lot of people will go out of job. So my own concern is if we bodily embraced this AI of the stuff, will it not take a lot of people out of their job? Mm-hmm. Well, because when the school owner knows that, okay, uh, instead of uh, instead of um uh, employing a math teacher, instead of employing a physics teacher, in- instead of employing a, an English teacher, she could go online, look for, I mean, apps and stuff like that, install it in the class and, you know, voila. <laughs> things happen. So we really need not take people out of their job. Well, AI cannot replace teachers. There are so many ways by which that is the I, point I want you to make. Okay. Yes. There are so many ways by which AI cannot replace teachers. Okay. Well, in terms of what um social and emotional intelligence of a child, mm-hmm. AI cannot take the what the replacements of the teachers. Exactly. Because as a teacher, it is very good for you to have um emotional skills. If you're able to look at your learners and study what they are passing to or what emotion are they feeling now, and AI cannot replace that. So there are so many things that AI cannot replace in respect of the teachers. All right, moving away from there now, how are trends like personalized learning and AI-powered adaptive assessment impacting education? Well, like I said, AI is really making an impact in the educational sectors now. Okay. Because now, I can remember during our time then, even from, it is until when they prepared our report card, that is when we can collect report sheet. Yeah. But with the help of AI automated um, machine now, a lot of things can be done. Mm. Mm. Children can print their results online. They can check their results online. Yeah, I remember. I, I, re- I used to remember those days when we write jam. You have to you have to wait for a very long time before you. Uh huh. Somebody will go and check your results for you. Or you'll be waiting for them to send your results to you. But anybody could just go to the cyber cafe or even on your phone now. You could just check check your result. Yes, I guess I get that. So AI is AI is really making a need part in the educational sectors. Okay. Because we see our teachers that they will still sit for hours struggling to write lesson notes. We see our teachers struggling to what mark attendance. But with the help of AI, in fact, learning is fun for teachers and learning is also fun for what? For the for the peoples. 
So that is one of the, the benefits of AI that we cannot overlook in the educational sectors now. All right. So, so now when you look at the, the founder of WhatsApp now, he can upgrade this app every yeah. time, every time. Yes. Just for him to also what? Be in trend of what technology is what taking place in the world, in the sectors now. Right. That is impressive to know. So AI does a lot of things and uh, it's made... Somebody said it makes our life easier. Yes. It makes us grow faster. It makes us understand things. Even outside the sphere of yet we are. That is interesting. Now, Coach, and what are the key takeaways from all these things we've mentioned, we've talked about? I mean, with the key takeaways from our discussion on the impact of the 21st century um, education in a global realm? Well, like I said, for all school owners and practitioners watching this live, please... I want us to know one thing. As the practitioners, as the school owners, you need to follow what it is trending now. If you want to upgrade, if you want to upskill, you need to follow what it is trending. And our data teachers will produce an updated result. Mm -hmm. So you can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. It's not possible. So the, the take home for this is let's keep learning. Let's relearn and unlearn. Follow the new trends. Follow what it is happening in the what in the educational sector. Yes, I said learning is a continual process. Yes, but we will stop day. learning. We start we dying. We die. All right. Now, what are the actions? What actions can educators and policy makers and individual states to ensure that education meets the needs of the twenty first century? Well, um, this is your question. Um, we have been have been repeating the same question again. But the all I will have to say concerning this is I still instead I'm still emphasizing on school owners okay. and practitioners that we need to learn. We need to learn what thing that we should learn to leave our comfort zone to learn. All right. There are some teachers, there are some school owners that the certificate with them since they are NCE, they are degree. That is what they've been taking around. Mm -hmm. We need to follow what it is trending. All right. The innovation of what the educational sector now is, we need to equip with the 21st century skills. Okay. We need to upskill ourselves. Okay. We need to make learning convenient. We need to make the learning environment conducive. And when you're talking about a conducive environment, it's not painting the school, making the school attractive, but the facilities that is involved. That is important. Because we have some schools that the only thing they do is just to collect money, but they don't have the right. They equip facilities to enhance the children. And that's why when we encourage all school owners, all practitioners, please, it's a must. Learning is a continuous process. The day you stop learning, you start dying. As a student, as a practitioner, we should always be angry for knowledge. Don't be tired of learning. Yeah. Learn a new trend, learn new things, learn what is in vogue. Yes. And when you have the skills, mm -hmm. people will keep looking for you. Like I've learned today that um, Maria Montessori. Yes, she's the. Uh, uh, yes, she's the founder of this Montessori. And um, you know, one thing that bothers me most is that. When you see small schools, okay. they keep using the word, the name Montessori. Please, we shouldn't check it. All right. So, so now you're telling us that we, 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 can, we can get it wrong. Yes. A lot of people are getting it wrong. Yes. Because they only have, yeah, I, I, I've, seen, I've, seen, I've seen some schools with the name, with the description. Yeah. This is also Montessori school. Yes. So it is not in the name alone. Yes. It is. No. So it is in the what? It is not the name alone, but... It is in terms of the world, the equipment involved. So Montessori is the equipment. Yes. Involved in educational practice. Yes. Hallelujah. That is interesting to know. Because a lot of people will think that, okay, let me just put the name. Montessori. I mean, sorry, Montessori, let me join into the names of my school. And wow, like maybe a lot of people will come to my school. So now we, we understand that it is not by the name alone. No, it is by what you can give. Are, are, there, are there special trainings for teachers? When it comes to Montessori education. Okay, yes. There's a special training for teachers. Yeah. Because we have some schools that 
they 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 work the materials mm-hmm. when they see it you see some schools some practitioners they want to buy them mm-hmm. but they don't know how to make use of them so we have a special training for school learners, practitioners. And one thing is that we are one of the most affordable training institutes so far. We, we, we encourage all local schools and local school owners, no matter the income that you are earning. Mm-hmm. Our academy is affordable for anybody to come in and well-trained, well-branded in this Montessori Approach that was I'm going to pay for the advert on the show after the show. Oh, open, no paper on the but after the show. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, watching, um, um, it is very important. As we said, we have been eating on the fact that we want a better, um, country, and we cannot get that by, I mean, giving our children quiet education. We need to go to the grassroots, and this is important. This Montessori system of education is very, very important. So, as Coach, Coach T has said it here. Um, teachers, go and learn, relearn, unlearn. You need to up your skills, upgrade yourself. You can't just sit there and think that things will change. Learning is a continual process. Just go, get out, and learn the new skills in the education. Now, when we talk about new skills these days, a lot of people believe it is just, okay, online skills alone. I mean, we're talking about maybe um, one of other skills, um, these um, social media skills that goes all around. But now, Coach T, are there other educational skills that we can learn as a teacher, as an educator? Yeah. Are there other educational skills? Yes, we have so many educational skills that we can learn. Okay. Like a practitioner now, as a practitioner, we should learn to upgrade our skills to work, learning disability. Mm. Now, when you see some children now in schools that they have one or two challenges, mm-hmm. when you see the teachers are unable to tackle them, and the next thing they will tell the parent that they, they should take them for deliverance. And that's why we need to have a special need therapist. That is, that is, this is uh-huh. making the child for deliverance. And lens. No, yes, yes. Now, I, 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 I think I remember some people will say, especially in the Yoruba culture, they will say, oh, you are my youth baby. Yes. Um, they've, they've got to check, they've got to check his um, star that is not meant for a book. So we are asked, he doesn't need. It doesn't need any deliverance. We have some children that they are special needs, mm-hmm. which they need to be, they need to work with a special needs therapist. So now we have specialists in education. Yes, we have specialists in education yes. that they, they know how to deal with these children, children with dyscalculia, dyslexia, autism. We have so many children that they are having one or two challenges in the educational sectors now. And Teachers that don't have these skills and special needs, mm-hmm. the things that will come to their brain is, oh, wow, this student needs a, work, a special deliverance. <laughs> Meanwhile, these are what? Disability children that they need to work. They need to work, work with what? Special needs therapists. So they need to engage them, somebody who will understand yes. their present condition. Yes. Wow, that is interesting. So we've heard it from being. You need to when you are when you notice the fact that your child is not doing well enough. So this is what they do. If you are watching this also, it is for you. It is everything is on deliverance. We have so much idolized religion in this country that any small problem, take him to church, take him to the mosque, take him to a traditional healer and stores like that. So it means that most of these solutions are outside what we think of. We should get specialists in education for these children. And believe me, they are going to be better they are going to be better coach t thank you for coming to the show today we really really do appreciate your time and um everything you the lives you've shared on this topic today and we hope that we will call you our uh, next time you are going to uh, it's, uh, uh, no problem you are always welcome yeah, thank you everyone for watching today please if you are joining us for the first time if you are watching for the first time please like subscribe and we want a lot of comment from from you we want your questions and we uh Telling you that we are going to answer every of your questions on the comment section. So we see you again. Have a very wonderful time. Bye.